Welcome to MasteringInLogic.com's Quick Tips, no-nonsense random tips that I think you might find useful. Maybe. In the first Quick Tips lesson, I talked about the bit crusher. So I thought for this one, I'd stick with all things distorted. Have you ever wondered how producers and mixing engineers get depth and space in their tracks? Distortion used in the right way can add something to almost any source. We all know it sounds great on guitars, but it can be applied to pretty much any source. Drums, bass, keys, vocals, strings, you name it, synths. So in this Logic Pro X Quick Tips, I'm going to talk about Logic's Clip Distortion plugin, how to use it, how to apply it, and how to get great results from it. In a nutshell, this plugin does one thing. It adds distortion by clipping the signal with the drive dial. The more you increase the drive, the more distortion. You have an input and output to balance the audio signal, a high and low pass filter which filters the distortion, a symmetry slider which essentially changes the characteristic of the distortion, a mix dial which blends the original and processed signal, and after the mix dial, there's a basic EQ section which consists of a low pass filter and high shelf, which can be boosted or attenuated. So that's the dials done. Let's talk about how we use it. First off, it's important to understand the signal flow. The signal is split in two. The unprocessed signal runs straight to the mix dial, and the processed signal goes through the drive dial onto the filter and symmetry section, and then to the mix dial, where you blend the signals and process both together if you need to with the EQ section. This is important to understand, especially when you use the mix dial to blend the original and process signals, because if you filter out too much of the top end with the low pass filter, you'll be filtering out the top end of the original signal too, and you might not want to do that say if you're processing the entire drum loop. So the filter section in the middle of the plugin, where the graphic display is, is where you filter and shape the distortion, the amount of which is set by the drive dial. Got it? Okay, good. Let's move on. So the first thing I want to show you is clip distortion to enhance a drum bus or entire drum kit. I've loaded Drummer and stuck with the first preset of the loop. The loop isn't important. What is, is the sound that we create. Notice I've used a send. The reason is I want to make use of the EQ section, but not filter the original drum sound. If I place the plugin on the insert and drop the low pass filter to one kilohertz, I'll lose the top end of the drums. Yes, I could use the mix dial, but I'll still be filtering the original drum sound if it was placed even on an insert. So let me show you what I mean. Okay, so I want to add some upper mid-range depth and get the drums to be a bit more punchy. I'm going to really dial in the drive, filter the top and bottom of the drive signal and use the symmetry slider to find the harmonics that will create a bump in the mid and upper mid-range and give the loop a bit more life. Finally, I'll blend the plugin back in with the send dial. Check it out. Notice there's more energy and it's a bit more gritty and animated. Because I've gone crazy with the drive, the bus dial is really low. The idea here is to add a tiny blend that will be enough to add to the sound. You don't really notice it's there, but you definitely notice it when it's not there. For the bass, I want to enhance the top end by adding some harmonic distortion and then boost it with the shelf from 11k up. I've placed this one directly on the insert and mixed it low. I'm not losing the original bass, so having it on the insert is just fine. When soloed, it will sound a bit much, 
but combined with all the instruments, it will blend perfectly. Trust me. For the tone and clip filter, I've removed the low end and left the top intact because that's the area I want to agitate with distortion. To get the right harmonic distortion, I simply moved the symmetry slider until I found the sound I wanted. I was aiming for something gritty and hard and found around minus 10% was just where I wanted it. Let's hear it with the drums. So that's all for now folks. Don't forget to check out part two and learn how to warm keys and add distorted movement to your sounds. Thanks for watching.